In the financial building of the city of Yin called Xinglong at this time there was a skirmish. An office worker was shouting at his boss, slapping his hand on the table. He addressed the boss as Zhang Jinyan. The young man told him that he himself had planned some kind of project. He asked the boss Zhang Jinyan about why the guy could not write his name in this project and get his commission from him. Zhang Jinyan, smoking a cigarette, with a smile on his face hinted to the employee that, wasn't it clear what he was doing belonged to the company, and this company was listening to the boss. He asked the guy if it wasn't logical. The office worker clenched his fist and abruptly turned around, throwing words after the boss that, in that case, he was an idiot, since he continued to work for this company. After a while, that guy was packing all his work supplies into a box. Concerned workers addressed that guy as Yang Chen, telling him not to be so impulsive. One of the employees told Chen that he simply did not know what kind of power that Mr. Zhang had. Another worker anxiously asked Yang Chen what his girlfriend would do if he lost his job to take care of his paralyzed father. Yang Cheng picked up the wooden photo frame and looked at it. After putting everything in a box, the young man began to leave, finally informing those workers that Yang Chen's parents left the guy a house and a car when they died. He also said that he still had the house and the car. The guy said he was just going to work as a driver until he found something else. After a while, Yang Cheng came out to the parking lot, looking at something on his phone. Approaching the car, he froze when he saw his girlfriend's messages. His girlfriend offered Yang Chen to break up, as he could not give the girl the life she wanted. She also said that they were from two different worlds and offered to just let each other go. She informed Yang Chen that she was going after her dream and couldn't wait for the guy. Drenched in cold sweat, the young man began to call the girl. However, a mechanical voice apologized into the phone and said that the number he dialed was unavailable. Yang Cheng leaned on his car and sobbed. He wondered why today was such a terrible day and what the young man had done to deserve all this. Gathering his thoughts, the guy put a box of things in the trunk and got behind the wheel, making a strangely admiring expression on his face. Yang Cheng said that the candle at dinner ordered for the evening should not have been wasted. He also said that God forbid, he would lose his girlfriend and his job. While the guy was saying this, he set up the phone in the taxi app. A mechanical voice from the phone greeted the driver and informed him that his order was available a kilometer away. Yang Cheng poked his index finger on the screen and the mechanical voice of the application reported that the order was successfully accepted, and then asked to get to the specified location as soon as possible. The guy started the car and immediately drove to the specified destination. When he arrived at the place, Yang Cheng called the customer and informed him that he was the driver and arrived at the customer's location. The girl on the other end of the phone yelled and said that she had just applied foundation and it would all take at least another 20 minutes. Yang Cheng instantly got angry and asked the girl why she was ordering so early. Couldn't she have done her makeup and gone downstairs before calling a taxi? The girl replied that she was almost finished. Then she said to give her half an hour and she was sure everything would be ready. And if the driver cancels the order, she will file a complaint. Yang Cheng cursed and told the girl to do what she wanted and he cancelled the order. A mechanical voice immediately reported that the driver Yang Cheng had received a complaint saying that the girl had never seen such a terrible driver. The driver yelled at the passenger and cancelled her order. The guy swore again. Suddenly, the young man's eyes narrowed. A girl appeared in front of him. Yang Cheng screamed in shock, asking that girl about what was going on and who she was. The unperturbed girl said that the host was detected and the waiting condition was met. Then she told about the reward for a bad review and said that the system wanted to connect to the host and asked to confirm yes or no. Yang Cheng cursed again in horror and said that he had never heard that there were rewards for bad reviews. The girl smiled and said that the system could reward Yang Chen as soon as the binding was successful, as well as every time the guy received a bad review, there would be a reward. She also said that the rewards will be different, it can be money, property, luxury cars, skills and so on. Yang Cheng's eyes lit up. He asked if they were cheats, and then he said, so why did he doubt and told the girl to connect sooner? The girl reported that the connection was successful, and then kissed Yang Chen. He froze in shock. Then that girl stood up and bowed slightly, saying that the bad reviews system recommended receiving bad reviews from passengers who looked strange or behaved unpleasantly. She then said that although, the guy could still provide good service and get good reviews to keep his driver rating. Then the girl smiled and said that since the owner had just received a complaint, the system gave the owner 28% of the shares of the All Island Hotel Group and Yang Cheng became the second largest shareholder of the hotel group. She also said that the owner is invited to the hotel, after which Yang Chen will be sent an agreement on the transfer of a share of shares. With burning eyes, the guy pressed the phone to his chest. The voice from the phone told the guy that the system was so powerful that immediately after binding it gives him a big gift and then wished good luck to the owner. The young man again fixed the phone on the stand and the application informed him that a new order had been received at a distance of 1.2 kilometers from his location at the All Island Hotel. 
The inspired guy picked up the phone and said that this order was made just for him to go to dinner at the All Island Hotel and pick up the contract for receiving shares. Yang Cheng poked his finger into the phone and a mechanical voice announced that the order had been successfully accepted, arriving at the destination. Yang Cheng saw the girl and asked her if she was a passenger with the order number 8043. The girl answered positively, and then got into the car. While they were driving along the road, the same girl named Wang Jai asked Yang Cheng about why he kept peeping at her in the mirror. Drenched in cold sweat, the guy made a strange expression on his face and asked the beauty if she knew how to drive. He then said that he wasn't looking at Wang Jiayi at all, but at the road behind him. The girl frowned and asked Yang Cheng about how he could insult the girl by saying she couldn't drive. She then added that it was obvious that Yang Cheng was inexperienced in driving and also very slow. Yang Cheng immediately pressed the gas pedal, speeding up the car. The girl asked in horror what he was doing. The car continued to accelerate. Wang Jiayi addressed Yang Chen as a brother and said that she was wrong. And then she began to ask the driver to slow down the car altogether. Holding on to the door handle, Wang Jiayi, already in tears, said that she was really wrong and then began to scream in fear. Shouting loudly, she asked Yang Cheng to slow down as she was scared. Yang Cheng grinned maliciously and asked Wang Jiayi about who her brother was. And he said that only if they don't get into an accident, the girl will be able to get out of there alive. He then said that he could let Wang Jiayi go if she called Yang Cheng daddy. The girl, bursting into tears, began to call Yang Chen daddy and daddy. Yang Cheng laughed and began to slow down, calling Wang Jiayi a good girl. At that moment, they had already arrived at the All Island Hotel, which was reported by Yang Cheng himself, telling the girl that she could get out of the car. Wang Jiayi, trembling and crying, got out of the car, insulting Yang Cheng and telling him to just wait, as she would leave a bad review to Yang Cheng and complain, and then call the police to have Yang Cheng arrested for dangerous driving. After a while, a blue plaque appeared, where the owner's congratulations on completing the mission based on negative reviews were written. The system rewarded the owner with the financial company Zing Lung. The guy was also asked to come to the company's office tomorrow to receive a letter of transfer, a certificate for real estate and other documents. Yang Cheng read the entire text in shock, and then was very happy. Zing Lung Financial Company was the same company where Yang Cheng used to work. Now the guy could settle the problem with that bad person. After a while, Yang Cheng went into the All Island Hotel and followed to the reception where Wang Jiayi was standing. She asked irritably how Yang Cheng dared to follow her. The young man smiled terribly and walked past the girl, telling her that her father had long taken his place here. Then Yang Cheng showed something on the phone to the receptionist, and she informed Mr. Yang that his place was at table number 8 and the hotel staff would take the guy to him. The girl then handed over the share receipt agreement folder and said that it was another document that their manager would like to hand over to Yang Chen, so he needed to keep it. Then the receptionist came out from behind the reception desk and said that she would escort Yang Chen to his table. Yang Cheng smugly raised his head up and chuckled as he followed the hotel employee. Wang Jiayi thought that even if she misunderstood Yang Chen, Jiayi would never forgive the guy. The receptionist, escorting the young man to the table, immediately brought him coffee and asked Mr. Yang to wait, as his food would be ready soon. Wang Jiayi walked past Yang Cheng as if she hadn't noticed him. Yang Cheng froze when he saw the girl. She followed on and greeted another man named Zhang Lung by shaking hands. He asked her if she was Wang Jiayi, the guest director. Yang Cheng concluded that it seemed to be a blind date. While drinking his drink, Yang Cheng saw a man accompanied by two girls. It was Mr. Lai, and next to them were Zhao Fei Fei and Chen Xin. What a coincidence. Chen Xin turned to Brother Lai and said that she had just seen a friend and would go to say hello. Then she walked up to Yang Chen and grinned maliciously, telling him that he was going too far because he and Zhao Fei Fei had already broken up. Then she asked what the guy was doing here. Is he really here to wreak havoc? The guy told her that he wasn't that low and he wasn't interested in girls like Zhao Fei Fei and Chen Xin. He also added that if they are not ashamed to spend all day with men over 40 and 50, then the guy is very sorry for their parents. Chen Xin slammed her hands on the table, angry at the guy. Mr. Li approached the girl and asked her what was going on. She confusedly turned to Brother Li and said that everything was fine. Then she told them to go, and she herself would be coming soon. Mr. Li asked if everything was alright, and then he said he saw that they had a bad conversation. And then I asked Yang Chen who he was. Yang Cheng put his hand on the sofa and said with a smile that he was Zhao Fei Fei's ex-boyfriend, whom she had just broken up with today. He then asked Mr. Lai when the two of them had slept together and if it was true that he and Fei Fei were lovers. Mr. Lai touched Fei Fei's face and asked if Yang Cheng was telling the truth. The girl burst into tears and said that she broke up with Yang Chen a long time ago, only he did not agree. Wiping away her tears, she said that she really broke up with Yang Chen, but she did not expect the guy to follow her to the All Island Hotel. Zhao Fei Fei then said that Yang Cheng was really bullying her, 
The man hugged the girl to him and stroked her hair, telling her that Fei Fei was smart and it wasn't her fault, so she didn't need to get upset about someone like that, and Mr. Lai would deal with young Chen here. She, continuing to cry, thanked the man. Then Mr. Lai turned to the young man and said that the fact that Yang Cheng was bothering his girlfriend was actually annoying the man. Then Mr. Li turned to the waiter and told him to call his manager Cheng, as the man needed to talk to him. The girl agreed worriedly. Zhao Fei Fei turned to Yang Chen and asked why he didn't leave here, otherwise he would be in trouble. Wang Jiayi chuckled and thought that Yang Cheng was such an oddball, because the situation had reached the point that he obviously could not get out of it. Zhang Lung asked Miss Wang if she knew this Yang Chen. She waved her hand and said that she didn't know him, but Wang Jiayi had just arrived by taxi, and Yang Cheng was her driver. Then she lowered her head and reported that the guy not only had a terrible temper, but also that he almost killed the girl by driving so recklessly. She also reported that the guy forced the girl to call him daddy before letting her go. And Wang Jiayi got out of the car and gave Yang Chen a bad review. Zhang Lung abruptly stood up and questioned her. And then he told the girl to wait until he taught Yang Chen a lesson. Wang Jiayi stood behind him and grabbed his hand, telling Mr. Zhang not to be so impulsive. Zhang Lung ignored the girl and addressed Yang Chen, calling him brother. He asked the guy, telling him that Miss Wang had just arrived in the guy's taxi and he was bullying her. Yang Cheng frowned and replied positively, and then asked if there were any problems and who was that guy. He introduced himself as Zhang Long and said he was on a date with Miss Wang. Then the guy said that if Yang Cheng apologized to Miss Wang now and called her aunt, Zhang Long would spare him. Otherwise, the guy will order Yang Cheng to be thrown out of here immediately. The young man closed his eyes and asked Zhang Long about who his father was. He smiled and said that his dad is the chairman of Tianmu Investment and he was going to invest in All Island Hotel Group. He also added that if Zhang Long asked them to blacklist Yang Chen, they would never dare to say no. Yang Cheng smiled and said then, like this brother with a lot of money, they should both show the guy what they are really made of. Suddenly a guy came up and asked Mr. Li why he didn't tell the employee in advance when he would come to dinner. Then the employee saw Mr. Zhang as well, exclaiming about what a day it was, since they were both here at the same time and what a great day it was for the hotel where this guy worked. Mr. Lee said that today was his girlfriend's birthday and they decided to come here for dinner, but the ex-boyfriend of Mr. Lee's girlfriend pestered her so that they could not eat in peace. The man hoped that manager Cheng would get rid of Yang Cheng. Then Zhang Lung said that he came on a date, but his companion was bullied by this guy. He said he was also in favor of manager Cheng getting rid of him, and Zhang Lung didn't want to see Yang Cheng anymore. Manager Cheng folded his hands in front of him and said that whoever was so reckless as to offend the two of them, Cheng would definitely take care of it. The men turned around in unison and pointed at Yang Cheng. Cheng opened his mouth slightly, thinking that, wasn't this the same new shareholder that the board of directors had just announced? Cheng then told the guards to quickly throw Mr. Lai and Zhang out of here, and not to let them in here in the future, as they are not welcome at their hotel. The men opened their mouths in shock. Mr. Li asked Cheng's manager if he had heard everything correctly, because the man was a supplier of products for their hotel. Zhang Lung was at the same time asking the manager if they still wanted to receive investments from his family. Manager Cheng smiled and, pointing at the guy, said that young Cheng was the second largest shareholder of their hotel group All Island. The young man closed his eyes and said that manager Cheng knew his business. Mr. Li and the girls opened their mouths slightly when they heard that he was the second shareholder. Wang Jiayi looked at Yang Cheng thoughtfully, not understanding how the second shareholder of the All Island Hotel ended up driving a taxi. Is he really a rich man? No wonder Yang Cheng spoke so arrogantly. Meanwhile, Yang Cheng turned to Mr. Lai, telling him that they would not need a man's help in the future, and to Mr. Zhang Long, telling him that they would not accept his investment either. Yang Cheng then ordered these guys to be thrown out. Zhao Fei Fei, all in tears, looked at Yang Cheng, wondering why she broke up with Yang Cheng. What should she do now? Isn't it too late to ask the guy for forgiveness? Then she knelt down and in tears began to tell him that she knew she was wrong. She also said that she just let Mr. Lai hold her hand and she had nothing with him, and Zhao Fei Fei completely belonged to Yang Chen. Chen Zin suddenly joined in, telling Yang Chen that Zhao Fei Fei was a bad woman who loved money. Then Chen Zin told Yang Chen to look at her, because she was still clean. The guy studied the girls, thinking that these two women were starting a dog fight. Mr. Lai rubbed his palms together and said that he didn't know before that Zhao Fei Fei was Mr. Yang's girlfriend. Otherwise, even if God had given Mr. Lai some courage, he wouldn't have dared to clash with Mr. Yang. Yang Cheng took a sip from his mug and put it on the saucer with a loud bang, asking manager Cheng about why he hadn't kicked these men out yet. The manager nodded to his boss and told the guards to take them away as soon as possible. The guards led Mr. Lai by the arm, who shouted to Mr. Yang that he was wrong and behind him was Chen Zin, who asked Yang Cheng to let her explain something. Manager Cheng leaned over to Yang Cheng and whispered in his ear, informing him that this Zhang Lung was the son of the chairman of Tainmu Investment. 
Yang Cheng took the mug in his hand and asked Chang why they needed Zhang Lung's investment, because while Yang Cheng was here, their investment was not needed. The guy asked the manager what he was afraid of Zhang Lung. Manager Chang leveled off and told the guards to get rid of Zhang Lung too. He also ordered him to be blacklisted and never again allow the young man to come to their hotel group. Zhang Lung began to shout that the guards should not dare to touch him. He also loudly said that the second shareholder of the All Island Hotel was not something that they and Tainmu Investment would pay attention to. Zhang Lung then turned to Miss Wang and offered to eat elsewhere. Yang Cheng smiled slyly, thinking that Miss Wang seemed to like Zhang Lung. He decided to steal the girl and see how proud he would be of himself. Then the guy got up and turned to Miss Wang, asking her about who she had a date with. Wang Jiayi turned around in surprise. Yang Cheng took a flower from the flower bed and twirled it in his hands, telling the girl that he had prepared flowers. He then invited Wang Jiayi to sit down and chat. The young man smiled and said that he seemed to have scared the girl with his jokes in the car earlier, so he would like to apologize properly. Wang Jiayi scratched her chin, thinking that since this was all a date with rich people, wouldn't it be better for her to choose someone more influential? Wang Jiayi then approached Yang Chen and said she would give him a chance to make amends since he was so sincere. Zhang Lung clenched his fist and began shouting at Wang Jiayi, asking her if she understood what she was doing. He rudely informed her that he was feuding with this guy because of her. The guy wondered why she insulted him. The girl raised an eyebrow and said that he did it not for her sake, but for the sake of his own face. She also said that she didn't ask Zhang Long to pick a fight with Mr. Yang. He pointed his finger at the girl and maliciously said that, let's say, he could not touch Yang Chen, but he could quite hit Wang Jiayi. The girl looked at the guy in horror. Zhang Lung said that if Miss Wang dared to sit down and have dinner with him, he told her now to think about what would happen to her. Yang Cheng gently put his hand on the girl's shoulder and said that everything was fine. After sitting Miss Wang on the sofa, he told her that she could sit and eat in peace, and if she was tired of this fly, Yang Cheng would get rid of it. Wang Jiayi smiled and thanked the guy. Suddenly, Zhang Lung swung at the girl, insulting her. Yang Cheng grabbed his arm and said that hitting a woman was disgusting. Manager Cheng pointed his hand at Zhang Lung, telling the guards to throw out this garbage. The guards took Zhang Lung by the arms and began to lead him out of the hotel. The guy resisted and said that he would not spare them and he was going back to his father to tell him about it and let these guys wait. Yang Cheng poured red wine into a glass and handed it to Miss Wang, offering to formally introduce himself. He introduced himself as Yang Cheng and said he was glad to see the girl and have dinner with her. Miss Wang picked up a glass and introduced herself to the young man as Wang Jai. Then she said she would delete the bad review later, because then they could start all over again. Yang Cheng laughed and said that there was no need to delete it, as let the bad review be a reminder of their special meeting, and then offered a drink. They happily bumped glasses of wine. The girl at the next table said to her companion, asking about the arrogance of the rich. She noticed that Yang Cheng had asked for a date with the girlfriend of the man who started a fight with him. The man said it was good to have money. Wang Jiayi smiled and asked Yang Cheng about what his family was doing. The guy, bringing a glass to his mouth, said that his parents unexpectedly died many years ago and now the young man has become a taxi driver. Then he asked the girl what she was doing. Wang Jiayi said that her hometown was Su and she was currently working in a luxury store. She also added that since Miss Wang wanted to stay in this city, she goes on a blind date. Yang Cheng smiled and said that everyone had the right to strive for a better life, and a woman is not ashamed to rely on a man. Yang Cheng thought to himself that compared to Zhao Fei Fei. Wang Jiayi was very sincere, she was one of those who only ran for money. Agreeing with the guy's words, Miss Wang again offered to drink wine. After taking a sip, the girl blushed and asked in a whisper if the guy knew why she was so prejudiced against Yang Cheng when she got into the car. Then she lowered her voice even more and said that she had two blind dates today, and the guy she dated before was pretty cute, but he tried to kiss Wang Jiayi while they were at the movies. Hearing Wang Jiayi's words, Yang Cheng chuckled and said that he thought she just didn't like that guy, since if a girl liked him, she wouldn't mind a kiss. Wang Jiayi immediately replied with a firm refusal, noting that it did not depend on how the person looked. Then she asked Yang Cheng about who even kisses at the first meeting. The guy waved his hand and said that kissing had nothing to do with their first meeting, as everything depended on the atmosphere and sensations. At the first meeting, you can even do more things, as long as there is a suitable atmosphere. Wang Jiayi covered her mouth with her hand and blushed, telling Yang Chen that she didn't believe it. How can someone want to kiss at the first meeting? Suddenly, Yang Cheng stood up and walked over to Wang Jiayi. Then he gently took her chin and kissed her. Having finished with this, the young man turned around and, wishing Bon Appetit, informed that everything was recorded on his account, and the guy himself went to rest in room 1208. Miss Wang remained on the sofa, touching her lips with her fingers in shock. The girl was thinking about how Yang Cheng had just kissed her. 
Jiayi didn't understand why she didn't resist. She was also thinking about the fact that La Yongcheng had specifically called his room number. Was he inviting her? The girl blushed again, trying to separate the shameful thoughts. After a while, Yang Cheng came out of the shower and heard a knock on the door. Opening the door, he saw Wang Jiayi in front of him. She immediately pounced on the guy and kissed him. Yang Cheng interrupted her, realizing that the girl was drunk. Cold sweat trickled down his face due to excitement. Yang Cheng picked up Wang Jiayi and told her not to blame him since the girl started it herself. Closing the door with his foot, the guy put the girl on the bed, and they again merged in a kiss. The next day, Yang Cheng woke up in his room and, not finding Wang Jiayi next to him, thought that she had already left. The guy got out of bed, rubbing his eyes. Turning around, he noticed a red spot. Yang Cheng froze in surprise, and then shifted his gaze to the wooden table. He noticed a wad of money and a note. Unfolding the note, the guy read where Wang Jiayi said that the guy did a good job last night and she was very pleased. The girl also noticed that the money lying on the table was a service fee. Then the girl wrote to the guy telling him not to go out anywhere this month, but to gain strength, because when Wang Jiayi was paid next month, she would return to put Yang Chen to bed for the night. After reading the note, the guy sighed with admiration, saying that this woman was quite interesting. In the afternoon, Yang Cheng entered the financial building of the Zing Lung Company. The guy walked up to the reception and greeted the receptionist, saying that his name was Yang Cheng and he had come to pick up his things. The administrator, hearing the guy's name, immediately jumped up from his seat and greeted the guy, introducing himself as the office manager Chang Chu. He told Yang Chen to wait a bit, and he will prepare everything now. At this time, two female workers were whispering about Yang Chen. One of them said that the new boss was very young, so he must have been a rich guy. The second one covered her mouth with her hand and asked in a whisper if there would be any changes in the company with the new boss. Office manager Chang Chu picked up the folder and handed it to Mr. Yang, saying that all the guy's documents were inside. He also said that Yang Cheng could check if everything was in place. The young man took the folder in his hands and smiled, saying that there was no need for this since he believed that manager Chang Chu was a good person and would not deceive him. Yang Cheng also said that he needed all these employees to help him with the management of this company. Chang Chu smiled and called those workers to say hello to Mr. Yang. The girls bowed and greeted him. He waved, and then Yang Cheng told them to get back to work. Then he turned to manager Chang Chu and asked him to tell him about the people who rented the 15th floor. The manager became serious, and then, after making machinations with the computer, showed boss Yang Chen all the information about renting the 15th floor. Chang Chu also said that the tenant's name was Zhang Jinyan, and his contract expired at the end of this month. Yang Cheng went ahead, informing the manager that since it so happened that their lease was coming to an end, he invited Chang Chu to go and talk to them. He quite agreed. As they rode in the elevator to the 15th floor, Yang Cheng smiled, and Chang Chu, holding the boss's folder in his hands, was looking at something on his phone. The phone rang. The manager informed boss Yang Cheng that he had a call from a client about the lease. Yang Cheng smiled and said that he could answer the call, and Mr. Yang himself would go first. Going into the company Sin Lung, the guy noticed that all the employees were in place. Seeing the guy, his former colleagues gasped in shock, saying the guy's name. One of them worriedly approached the guy and asked why he quit. Then he offered to go to Mr. Zhang and manager Lai, and that former colleague would talk to them. Yang Cheng smiled, thanking that guy, but then refused. Yang Cheng then shouted loudly, asking where Zhang Jinyan was, telling him to get out quickly and stop hiding in the office. Mr. Zhang immediately appeared behind him, who was displeased with Yang Chen about why he was shouting. Didn't the guy know where he was? The man was displeased asking him about the place where the guy could scream. Yang Cheng turned around and looked maliciously at Zhang Jinyan, asking him if he had really gone out. The guy thought the man was too scared to come out. Yang Cheng then asked him if Zhang Jinyan had any commission that he owed the young man. Zhang Jinyan smiled maliciously, asking the guy that he wanted a commission. Then the man told the guy to be a good boy and get back to work. Then the man asked how about giving the guy $10,000 for 10 months, provided that from now on Yang Cheng would make at least one deal every month. Yang Cheng waved his hand near his nose, reminding Mr. Zhang that he had promised 20% commission for the successful consideration of the case without any conditions. Zhang Jinyan laughed out loud, asking Yang Cheng about the evidence. Was the guy just going to say that Mr. Zhang said it? He then asked what if he said that Yang Cheng had promised to work for him for free for the rest of his life. Yang Cheng couldn't stand it and shouted loudly, saying that all the employees in the company had heard it. Zhang Jinyan smiled slyly and asked the workers if there was anyone who heard the man say that he was going to give a commission. One of the workers got up from his seat and said with a smile that Yang Cheng must have misheard everything. The guy gritted his teeth, thinking that, really, none of his former colleagues knew that his today could become their tomorrow. Then that smiling employee turned to Yang Chen and said that Mr. Zhang was unusually kind to Yang Chen, so he had to hurry up to thank Mr. Zhang and get back to work. 
Zhang Jinyan then said that he liked that Mr. Yang was talented. He also said that this was his only chance, so the guy shouldn't be stupid and go back to work sooner and the man should go down and talk to the management about extending the lease. After lighting a cigarette, he asked them if they thought it was easy for Mr. Zhang, the boss, to maintain such a large number of employees. That smiling employee pressed his hands to himself and warmly informed them that they should all be grateful to Mr. Zhang. Yang Cheng frowned and said that he only came to work to earn money, but he couldn't even get the salary he deserved, and that employee still wanted Yang Cheng to be grateful. The guy thought it was really shameless. Zhang Jinyan loudly told the employee to close the doors now. He immediately ran to the door. The door clicked. Manager Chang Chiu froze, wondering why the door had suddenly closed. He was worried if something had happened to the new boss. Chang Jinyan pointed his finger at Yang Chang and told him to delete the recording immediately. And then he would let the guy go. Suddenly, Chang Jinyan took the computer from the table and broke it into pieces. He then informed Yang Chen that everyone had seen the guy smash their computer, so Chen's salary was deducted. Yang Cheng pointed at the phone with his finger and said that his recording was still going on and the guy had recorded everything the man had just said and done. Yang Cheng then asked if Mr. Zhang didn't understand that there was a feature called cloud in the phones. Even if the guy deletes the data from his phone, it will still be saved. Mr. Zhang insulted Yang Cheng and asked him how he dared to secretly record him. That smiling employee started rolling up the sleeves of his shirt, asking Mr. Zhang about what was the point of talking to Yang Chen at all. He said to beat the guy first and then destroy the record. There was a knock on the door. Zhang Jinyan froze, and then went to the door and opened it. In front of him was manager Chang Chu. Zhang Jinyan faded away and carefully asked Chang Chu about why he personally came to their office. He also revealed that he was just about to come down to talk to manager Chang Chu about extending the lease. Chang Chu frowned and informed that he was here to see Mr. Yang and then asked why Zhang Jinyan was locking the door in the middle of the day. The manager was worried whether Mr. Zhang hadn't done anything to Mr. Yang. Zhang Jinyan raised his eyebrows and asked the manager about Mr. Yang. Chang Chu calmly pointed at Yang Chang and informed him that Mr. Yang, the new boss of their company, was standing there. Mr. Zhang asked the man in shock about the new boss. Manager Chang Chu came over at lightning speed and asked Mr. Yang about what was going on. He then apologized, saying he shouldn't have answered the call. Yang Cheng assured the manager that everything was fine and he arrived on time. Suddenly Zhang Jinyan got into the conversation and asked manager Chang what he meant when he said that the new boss. He did not have time to finish. As manager Chang Chu solemnly introduced Mr. Yang, saying that he paid $2 billion for this building and is now its owner, now it is Yang Cheng is in charge here. Zhang Jinyan and the other workers opened their mouths in shock. They were tormented by questions about the fact that Yang Cheng actually spent $2 billion on this building. Why did he come to work here then? Yesterday he quit his job, and today he is buying a building. Is this a gesture of revenge? The employee whispered in the manager's ear a question about whether it was possible that they made a mistake, and Yang Cheng has the same name as the new boss. He shouted back that the employee was mocking him. Did he really think that the manager didn't even know who was in charge here? Mr. Zhang excitedly shook Mr. Yang's hand, asking him not to be angry and telling him that he had misunderstood everything. The man began to say that it was true, that he should be punished for what he had done. He then asked Yang Cheng how about Chang Jinyan doubling the guy's salary and they would forget about it. Then manager Chang Chu asked Mr. Yang about the fact that the guy worked here, noting that Mr. Zhang still owed the young man a salary. Yang Cheng raised his head up and replied with a firm yes. Manager Chang Chu sharply pointed his finger at Chang Jinyan and said that it was clearly written in their contract that they must act in good faith in accordance with the law. Otherwise the company had the right to terminate the contract and demand triple rent. Chang Chu noticed that he didn't think Mr. Zhang had forgotten this point. Yang Cheng smiled broadly and pointed his index finger at his phone, saying that if there is such a point, then the manager should listen to the recording on the phone. The guy immediately turned on a recording where Mr. Zhang said that how about he give the guy $10,000 for 10 months, provided that from now on Yang Cheng would make at least one deal every month. Zhang Jinyan innocently folded his hands in front of him and invited Mr. Yang to leave the past in the past. The man also said that he would pay the guy three times more commission, and he could delete the record and the issue would be settled. Yang Cheng chuckled and rejected the idea, saying that he just wanted what he was entitled to, he didn't want a penny more. Then Yang Cheng began to leave, finally turning to manager Chang, telling him that boss Yang Cheng left this matter to his discretion, but Chang Chu should make sure that Mr. Yang would be satisfied. He bowed and smiled, telling Mr. Yang not to worry, as the manager would do everything in the best possible way. Chang Jinyan froze in horror. He then shouted, calling Yang Cheng, saying that he had already admitted defeat. The man asked why he wanted to get rid of him, because he never knew how life would turn out. Yang Cheng smiled and said that he is a man who never leaves a way out for his enemy. And then the guy told Chang Jinyan to get out of here. He started shouting that he wanted to discuss it. 
Yang Cheng sternly looked at Jin Yan and asked him about who he was to discuss this with Mr. Yang. Then Mr. Zhang turned to the staff and said that if they helped him, they would receive 50,000 yuan. The staff froze, but remained silent. Zhang Jinyan offered 100,000 yuan and told him to simply take away Yang Cheng's phone. And he would immediately reward the employees with 100,000 yuan in cash, as well as double the salary plus. Yang Cheng spread his hands to the sides and asked Zhang Jinyan with a smile that, did he really think that his words were still trustworthy? Then the guy said that he hadn't even paid the guy a commission. Did Zhang Jinyan think everyone here was that stupid? At this time, manager Chang Chu grabbed his phone and secretly told one of the employees on the phone to tell the building's security to immediately go up to the 15th floor. Ten minutes later, two employees went up to the 15th floor, accompanied by security. One of the girls was anxiously asking the other about what was going on and why manager Chan had called them here. The other replied that she had no idea. Besides, all the guards were here too. It looks like Jinyan insulted manager Chan. The guards surrounded Chang Jinyan around. Manager Chang Chu pointed his finger at the man and said he would see who dared to touch Mr. Yang. Zhang Jinyan, terrified, began to wipe the cold sweat from his face with a handkerchief, uncertainly trying to say something. Yang Cheng covered his smile with his hand and told Manager Chan that he was leaving it up to him. With a smile, he told Mr. Yang not to worry, as Manager Chang Chu would make sure that everything was done in the best possible way. Yang Cheng then leveled off and addressed the gentleman employees, informing them that Zhang Jinyan no longer had power. Then he asked them why they shouldn't all get back what they deserve. Otherwise, when Mr. Zhang goes bankrupt, they won't get anything. One of the employees raised his hand and reported that Zhang Jinyan often forced them to work overtime and did not pay for it. Another employee also raised his hand and, agreeing with the words of the first, said that the man also forced them to sign questionable contracts. The smiling employee also raised his hand up and said that Zhang Jinyan often deducted their salary for no reason. The man, hearing this, discontentedly addressed him as Lai Yuan and told him not to dare to throw stones at him. Lai Yuan informed the man that he had always hated him, but did not dare to resist because the guy had to work under Zhang Jinyan. Then the guy pointed his finger at the man and said that now that Yang Cheng was in charge here, it was a great chance to inform on Mr. Zhang. Of course, Lai Yuan must resist evil to the end. Yang Cheng, at this time, thought that Lai Yuan was a very fickle person. After some time, the office of the company Zing Lung was sealed. Mr. Zhang, holding a box of his belongings in his hands, told Yang Chen that he would not get away with it. The guy frowned and said that Chang Jinyan was to blame for this. Since there are laws in this world, and a man could not do everything he wanted just because he was the boss. Yang Cheng then smiled and addressed all the employees, saying that the guy was going to open an advertising agency in this office. Then the young man asked his former colleagues if any of them wanted to work here. The employees froze, and then began to raise their hands, announcing their desire to work there. Seeing Lai Yuan's raised hand, Yang Cheng asked the guy if the guy was not a loyal slave of Zhang Jinyan and what was the point of Yang Cheng taking the guy to work for him. Mr. Yang then told Lai Yuan in a stern tone to get out of here, as he was not welcome here. The guy froze in shock, and then knelt down and pressed himself against Yang Cheng's legs, asking him that if Lai Yuan went with Yang Cheng to sue Zhang Jinyan, would he be able to hire him? Yang Cheng smiled slyly and said that even if Lai Yuan went and killed Zhang Jinyan, Mr. Yang would still not accept the guy. Yang Cheng believed that there was no result from people like Lai Yuan. What was the point of him accepting a guy? Then Yang Cheng kicked Lai Yuan away with his foot and told him to get out of here. Then the young man smiled again and informed the remaining employees that in a maximum of half a month everyone would be able to return to work. The guy also said that from now on, the management of the company will be transferred to Zhu Ziali, so everyone can contact her directly if they have any problems. The guy also said that it was time for everyone to take a vacation. Go home and rest, and then wait for the notification to return to normal work. Zhu Ziali hesitantly asked Yang Cheng's boss about the fact that he had appointed her manager. The girl was worried that she didn't have any experience, and in the end, she could ruin everything. Mr. Yang smiled and told Zhu Ziali that it was normal to be inexperienced when you were just starting to do something. After hearing these words, Ziali told the boss not to worry, as she would listen to him and study hard. One of the employees offered to thank the new boss. All the other employees bowed in unison and began to thank the boss. The guy smiled and began to leave, and the staff said goodbye to him in chorus. He told them with a smile that they would see each other soon. After going down to the parking lot, Yang Cheng concluded that he had finished here, so it was time to get back to work. The guy got into the car and set up the phone. A mechanical voice from the app announced that a new order had appeared at a distance of 500 meters from Yang Cheng. The guy accepted the order and immediately went there. When Yang Cheng arrived at his destination, he saw a girl walking with a guy in her arms. Yang Chen thought that this girl looked like Wang Lixin, his college girlfriend. It couldn't be a coincidence. As the passengers got closer, Yang Cheng realized that it was indeed Wang Lixin. 
When the girl got into the car, she called Yang Cheng by name in surprise and said that she did not expect to see him here at all. The young man turned around with a smile and asked Wang Glixen if she was walking with her boyfriend now. Wang Glixen snuggled up to her boyfriend and said that it was her boyfriend named Zhang Jiankun. She then told Zhang that this driver was her university classmate named Yang Cheng. She also said that at that time he was the best student at their university, not to mention what a handsome guy. Zhang Jiankun Jiankun grinned, asking Wang Glixen about what it means that Yang Cheng was popular with girls. The girl thought about it and said that many girls liked Yang Cheng, but she was sorry that Yang Cheng already had a girlfriend. Then she clasped her hands and smiled, asking the driver if they had parted yet. Then she apologized and said that she meant how far they had come now. And then she asked about plans for marriage. Yang Cheng pressed his foot on the gas and said that they had parted. Wang Glixen said she was sorry that Yang Cheng turned down so many girls for Zhao Fei Fei. And then she asked if he regretted it now. To which Yang Cheng calmly replied that he refused Wang Glixen. And then asked what was the point in bringing up this issue now. The girl blushed and said that she didn't mean it. She then said that she should thank Yang Cheng, since if he hadn't publicly rejected her, wouldn't she be living such a miserable life with Yang Cheng right now? Zhang Jiankun frowned and asked Wang Glixen if Yang Cheng had humiliated her. She made a sad face and said that Yang Cheng humiliated her. Wang Glixen was 19 years old when the girl publicly confessed her love to him. She thought Yang Cheng could have just rejected her, but he humiliated her. To which Yang Cheng said that so much time had passed that he had already forgotten what he had said at all. If he said something wrong, the guy said he apologized. Zhang Jiankun put his hand on Yang Cheng's shoulder and said, Seeing that the guy was so sincere, Zhang Jiankun's company lacked the staff usually responsible for serving tea and cleaning. Then the guy grinned and asked about why Yang Chen wouldn't stop driving and join his company. Wang Glixen smiled and clasped her hands in a wide gesture, saying that Zhang Jiankun was the planning manager of the Heian advertising campaign. She also said that if Yang Cheng went to work, Wang Glixen could ask Zhang Jiankun to take care of him. Yang Cheng thanked the girl, although he refused. He said he enjoyed working in an online taxi and didn't need an official job. Then the guy opened the window. The girl was sweating all over and began fanning herself with her palms, asking Yang Cheng about why he was opening the window. Then she told the guy to close the window and turn on the air conditioner, as it was infernally hot in the car. Yang Cheng frowned and said that the order did not specify the mandatory activation of the air conditioner. Then the guy said that Wang Glixen could say a few kind words to Yang Chen and he would turn on the air conditioner, or the girl could turn it on herself. Zhang Jiankun started shouting, asking Yang Cheng about how dare he. He then said that if Yang Cheng had not known Wang Glixen, Zhang Jiankun would have dealt with the guy long ago. He loudly told the guy to turn on the air conditioner right now and not force him to do it. Wang Glixen anxiously took her boyfriend's hand and told him not to be so impulsive, because Yang Cheng was driving the car. If Zhang Jiankun distracts him, they might get into an accident. Wang Glixen frowned and turned to Yang Chen, saying that they were old friends, and told the guy to turn on the air conditioner, and then she would pretend that nothing had happened, otherwise Wang Glixen would leave a bad review and complain. Yang Cheng glanced in the rearview mirror and told the girl not to think that she could scare the guy with a bad review, and if she didn't like it, they could get out of the car. Zhang Jiankun shouted in anger, telling Yang Chen to stop the car right now. He immediately stopped the car, and the passengers got out. Zhang Jiankun kicked the car door and told Yang Chen to get out of the car. He grinned and said that he would stay in the car and let them enjoy the summer sun. After these words, the guy immediately left. Zhang Jiankun tried to catch up with him, shouting after him to stop the guy. Wang Glixen approached her boyfriend and asked where they were. He, breathing heavily, said that it was a bridge over the river and stopping here was prohibited. The guy realized that they would not be able to call a taxi from here. Wang Glixen was asking what they should do now. Zhang Jiankun grabbed the phone and said he would file a complaint against Yang Chen and let him be fired. After a while, Yang Chen received a notification that he had a new bad review. Congratulating the guy with a bad review, the system rewarded the owner with 2 million. Yang Cheng smiled thinking that it must be nice to be on the bridge in this heat. Then the guy opened a chat with classmates and saw new messages. Wang Glixen wrote that today she went outside and called a taxi. There she met Yang Cheng, but he threw her out of the car on the bridge. Luna asked Yang Chen about getting a job as a taxi driver again. Tao asked about what happened. After all, didn't the guy work for some company before? Zhu Zio suggested that maybe Yang Cheng had some difficulties, or maybe he just took a break from his work for a while. The guy hit the gas again. After a while, he was already leaving the store and drinking coffee, while answering messages in the chat. Yang Cheng reported that he quit his job a few days ago and was now working in an online taxi. He also wrote that if they are ashamed that they know a guy, they can just pretend that they don't know Yang Chen the next time they see him. 
He also said that he would send the recording from the car to the support service, as well as to the chat, so that classmates would hear it. After Yang Cheng sent the MP3 recording, Zhu Xiao turned to Wang Lixin and wrote that she had said a lot too much. Did they really care that the guy was a taxi driver? Did they really need to feel superior to him? Zia Yu turned to Wang Lixin and said that she obviously looked down on Yang Cheng for driving a taxi and deliberately humiliated him. Luna wrote that Wang Lixin is a bad person. Wang Lixin sighed furiously and told Zhang Jiankun that the guy had posted a record in a classmate's chat and now everyone was blaming the girl. The guy clenched his fist and said he was going to kill Yang Cheng. He then told the girl to send a message to Yang Chen that she was inviting him to a party at the Hing Hotel on Sunday to lure him. And Zhang Jiankun, at this time, is going to expose Yang Cheng in a bad light in front of her entire class. Wang Lixin snuggled up to Zhang Jiankun, saying that the guy was so smart and offered to do it. Yang Cheng threw the crumpled coffee cup into the trash. He saw a message saying that Wang Lixin wanted to invite him to dinner at the Hing Hotel and apologize. He chuckled and said that it depended on whether Yang Cheng would be in a good mood that day. Suddenly it started to rain. The guy covered his head with his hand, thinking that today was a beautiful day, and Wang Lixin and her boyfriend must be having fun on the bridge. After a while, the guy was doing the order again, sitting in the car. He called and informed the passenger that the car that was ordered had arrived at its destination. The girl on the phone asked how she should get there in such a rain and ordered to come for her somewhere. Yang Cheng was surprised and told the passenger to wait there then, and he would follow her. The guy took an umbrella and ran up to the girl, asking her if she was Miss Zhang. The girl looked haughtily at Yang Cheng and said that there was so much water on the ground that she couldn't walk on it. Yang Cheng apologized and said that he had no services for the disabled. Ms. Zhang lifted her foot and told her to look at her new shoes, and then asked if the guy knew how expensive they were. She then said there was so much water on the ground and then asked what she should do if her shoes got wet. Then the girl said that many people would gladly carry her in their arms. But she did not give them this chance, but Yang Cheng had this chance. Yang Cheng closed his eyes and handed the girl an umbrella, saying that they would forget about it, and the guy could give the girl an umbrella and she could walk to the car herself. Ms. Zhang abruptly grabbed an umbrella and called the guy stupid. Then they went to the car and got in. Ms. Zhang said that Yang Cheng had upset her, and if she did it again, she would get a bad review. The driver ignored her words and asked her to fasten her seatbelt. After some time, Yang Cheng happily announced that they had arrived. Ms. Zhang said she couldn't go out because there was too much water on the ground, because she would get her new shoes dirty. Yang Cheng turned back and said it was a car, not a plane, and then I asked about how he could get closer. Ms. Zhang sternly said that she didn't care, since Yang Cheng had to deliver her to the place or she would leave a bad review for the guy. She told me to believe her that she was not joking with the guy and would really complain about him. The guy agreed and told her to come out and complain about him. Ms. Zhang started shouting that she wouldn't get out of the car until the guy took her upstairs. Yang Cheng then pulled out the key and got out of the car, slamming the door with the words that she could stay in the car as long as she wanted. Ms. Zhang immediately got out of the car. Yang Cheng waved goodbye, saying that he had gone to have a snack. The girl took out her phone and told the guy to wait, and she would sue him. While Miss Zhang was looking at the phone, the guy quickly got into the car and closed the doors. The girl froze in shock and opened her mouth slightly. The guy left, dousing the girl from a puddle. She cursed loudly. Yang Cheng laughed and said that there are always people in this world who think they are entitled to special treatment. Then he picked up the thermos and cursed, realizing that he had run out of tea. Suddenly, a girl appeared next to him, who happily congratulated the owner on receiving a bad review and complaint. Then she reported that the system rewards the guy with 50 grams of tea leaves of the Da Hung mother tree. Then the girl asked the owner to open the trunk and get the reward. Yang Cheng exclaimed, saying that this system is good. Then he asked the girl why the reward was only 50 grams and why so little. The girl smiled and told the owner that he did not know, but this tea from the mother tree Da Hung is more expensive than gold. She said that the initial price at the auction for 20 grams exceeded 200,000, and now this rarity cannot be bought even for money. Yang Cheng was shocked by how expensive these tea leaves were. Yang Cheng opened the trunk and took out a small box. Then he took out a small package of tea and exclaimed joyfully, realizing that each small package was worth 10,000. He put the leaves in a thermos and poured the brewed tea into a mug, offering himself to try one of the 50 packages, as the tea smelled delicious. Suddenly, the system flashed a notification in front of the guy's eyes that the owner had received another bad review. Now a bonus is available. The owner gets a villa in Vinjong. It was also written there that the guy was asked to stay at home, and the courier would deliver the property documents, keys, and so on to him. Yang Cheng sipped his tea contentedly, thinking that the villa in Vinjong is a coastal area. Its approximate cost is about $500 million. The guy was very interested in who gave him a bad review, 
and this tea was really delicious. Yang Cheng put the thermos in the cup holder. Suddenly a girl got into his car. The guy asked in surprise what this beauty was doing. The girl smiled and took out a wad of money, waving in front of Yang Chen. She informed the driver that the money was his. He sternly informed that he was not a taxi, but an online car rental service. He said that the girl needed to place an order on the platform, and the girl can get out of the car and transfer to another one. The girl frowned and said it was nonsense, and then told him to drive when he was told. The girl said that today she wanted to ride Yang Cheng's car. Suddenly, a guy with a phone came up and started knocking on Yang Cheng's car window and told him to open the door. The girl started shouting at Yang Cheng not to open the door. She warned him that if he dared to open the door, she would bite him to death. The guy pointed his finger at the man and asked if his girlfriend knew him. She immediately said that she knew him. Yang Cheng turned to the man and asked if they knew each other. He started shouting that it was his girlfriend. The girl began to shout that she was not his girlfriend and said that today they met for the first time on a blind date. As she became his girlfriend, the man got angry and asked again about a blind date. Then he turned to the girl, calling her Wang Kaini and said that her father owed his family five million. And her father used Wang Kaini to pay off the debt. Then he asked her why she was pretending to be stupid. He also said that he had booked a hotel and told Wang Kaini not to spoil his mood. The girl started screaming, asking Yang Cheng if he had heard it. She then said that they were not in a relationship and if Yang Cheng handed her over to this man, she would become an accomplice. The guy opened his mouth in surprise. The man started shouting that it had nothing to do with Yang Chen, so let him open the door. Yang Cheng broke out in a cold sweat and spread his hands to the sides, asking the beauty why she should not call the police. He also said that he was just an online taxi driver and didn't want to get into a fight between them. Wang Kaini screamed in horror, asking Yang Cheng about why he was so calm. She then insulted Yang Cheng and said that he was of no use at all. Yang Cheng asked in shock, and then said that, shouldn't her father be the most disgusting? Yang Cheng also said that he had nothing to do with Wang Kaini and he had no obligation to protect her. Then he said that if she wanted, the guy could call the police for her. Suddenly, the man began to kick and pull the door, telling the girl to get out of the car. She screamed for the man to leave. Wang Kaini then turned to Yang Chen as a brother and asked him to do her a favor and save the girl. Yang Cheng told her seriously to just call the police. Tears welled up in Wang Kaini's eyes. She said she would like to call the police, but even if it got to the police, her family didn't have the money to repay the debt to that man. Suddenly, this man grabbed Wang Kaini by the hair and told her to get out, otherwise he would kill her in the car. He then grabbed the girl's chin and addressed Yang Chen, telling him to open the door and let him get into the car. Then he offered to go to the suburbs and said that he would let Wang Kaini play with him after he was done. Yang Cheng started the car and put his hands on the steering wheel. The man asked what the guy was doing. He then said that if Yang Cheng dared to take Wang Kaini, the man would find him and kill him, even if he had to find the whole city. The man then introduced himself as Zhang Hangzhai. Yang Cheng stepped on the gas and said that it didn't matter who the man was. The car immediately left. Zhang Hangzhai ran after them, insulting the guy and telling him to come back. Then he took out his car keys and pressed the button, growling after Yang Chen to just wait. Wang Kaini thanked Yang Cheng, calling him a wonderful person. Yang Cheng calmly informed him that it was useless to compliment him, since Wang Kaini was not interesting to him. Then the guy said that he would drop the girl off nearby and she herself would be able to get home by another taxi. Suddenly, there was another car next to them, driven by Zhang Hengzhai. He told Yang Chen to stop and said he was warning the guy that he would kill him. Wang Kaini started shouting to brother Yang Chen that Zhang Hengzhai was catching up with them. She also said that the guy should not stop now, otherwise the girl is finished. The tense Yang Cheng twisted the steering wheel to the side and pressed the gas, thereby provoking Zhang Hengzhai to tilt his car to the side. Wang Kaini, seeing this, laughed as Hengzhai crashed his car. After a while, Yang Cheng stopped at the bus stop and told Wang Kaini to get out of the car right away. The girl coquettishly looked at the guy and said that now she was giving him a great chance. If he took her home, she would give him her first time, since Yang Cheng was still better than Zhang Hengzhai. Yang Cheng asked her why he had the feeling that she thought she was living in a fairy tale. He then told her to get out of the car immediately. The girl discontentedly began to get out of the car, calling Yang Chen a coward and other insulting words. The guy immediately left as soon as she came out. Wang Kaini continued to shout insults after him. After a while, Yang Cheng found himself near the Bunjiang Villa. The smiling man turned to Mr. Yang and said that he was now the owner of the villa, keys and everything else. He then said that he would take the young man to the villa after he parked his car. After a while, they found themselves inside the villa. Yang Cheng looked around the villa and said that he just needed to bring some clothes. Suddenly the phone rang. Yang Cheng picked up the phone and heard the voice of the secretary of the All Island Hotel Group. The secretary said that he needed Mr. Yang to come to a meeting at the headquarters of the All Island Hotel at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Yang Cheng smiled, saying that he understood everything. 
After a while, Yang Cheng came to the meeting at the All Island Hotel, although he was a little late. He apologized and introduced himself, saying that it was a great honor for him to meet with them, dear shareholders. The secretary greeted Mr. Yang with a smile and showed him the place where the guy could sit. He also said that he did not expect their new second shareholder to be so young. The man thought he was an old bastard. He then introduced Lai Wanhong, who was the chairman of All Island Group. Next, he introduced Zhang Wu, the boss of Sky Curtain Investments. After that, the man announced the topic of their meeting, the investment of Sky Curtain in All Island. Yang Cheng sat down at the table, thinking about the investment from Sky Curtain. Chairman Lai Wanhong said that now that they all know each other, he suggested getting down to business. He turned to Mr. Yang and said he knew everything about what happened between him and Mr. Zhang's son at the hotel. Then he turned to Mr. Zhang, who was also here, and asked why they didn't have a drink. Mr. Zhang Wu spread his hands and said he hoped Mr. Yang wouldn't be offended by the children's ignorance. The guy closed his eyes and said that Mr. Zhang knew that his son had behaved quite audaciously that day. He insulted Yang Cheng so much and Mr. Zhang still wanted Yang Cheng to forgive him just like that. Chairman Lai Wanhong turned to Mr. Zhang and said that for the sake of their promising future, he had to give in. He also said that Zhang Wu should call his son and ask him to sincerely apologize to Mr. Yang. Mr. Zhang began to say that his son Zhang Lung had done nothing wrong. He only stood up for his girlfriend when she was bullied. The man wondered why his son had to apologize. Yang Cheng folded his hands in front of him and asked Mr. Lai if there were any other issues that would be discussed at today's meeting. Besides the capital injection from Sky Curtain Investment, he replied with a firm no. Yang Cheng then stood up from the table and said then let him clarify his attitude towards all of them. He said he did not agree with Sky Curtain's investment in the All Island Hotel. Then the guy waved goodbye, saying that he still had things to do, so he would go. The surprised man asked Mr. Yang if he was leaving. As soon as the young man slammed the door behind him, Mr. Zhang Wu banged his fists on the table and said that Mr. Yang was too toxic. Mr. Zhang was the one who wanted to invest his money in their hotel. He wondered why they were bothering him and why they wouldn't try to please Mr. Zhang instead. Why should he tolerate it at all? The chairman smiled and told Mr. Zhang not to get angry, as the young people were all a little angry. He also said he would talk to Mr. Yang later, and Mr. Zhang should go back and discuss it with his son as well. Lai Wanhong clarified what he meant. If they can solve the problem with an apology, then why don't they do it? Mr. Zhang abruptly got up from the table and said he would come back and talk to his son. Yang Cheng went down to the parking lot and walked over to his car. Zhang Hengjai suddenly appeared, rejoicing that he had finally found Yang Cheng. He was walking quickly towards the guy in the company of other men with iron bats. Hengjai asked the guy if he expected that they would meet so soon. Yang Cheng tensed up and asked how he got here. Zhang Hengjai said that he told Yang Cheng last time that if Yang Cheng took her away, Zhang Hengjai would find him anywhere. Did Yang Cheng think he was joking with him? Yang Cheng rubbed his fists, asking Hengjai that he wanted to fight with him. Zhang Hengjai picked up an iron bat and told him not to worry, as he would have time to deal with the guy, but not now. Now Zhang Hengjai decided to smash Yang Cheng's car. Zhang Hengjai's companions immediately attacked Yang Cheng's car and violently began to break it. Yang Cheng took out his phone and began filming saw where his car was being broken down. Zhang Hengjai said that the guy didn't have to take it off, since he could afford to pay for it. He also said that if Yang Chen didn't have a car, he wouldn't be able to earn a living. Suddenly, a red car appeared in the parking lot, and Wang Kaini got out of it. She yelled at Zhang Hengjai and asked him if he was crazy. She asked why he crashed Yang Cheng's car, because Wang Kaini promised to stay with Zhang Hengjai tonight. He smiled and said that he just wanted and was going to spoil Yang Chen's mood for breaking his heart. Then Heng Jai pointed his finger at the girl and said that she had fallen for the taxi driver. He didn't understand how Wang Kaini could be so cheap. He also said he was going to kill the girl tonight. Wang Kaini pointed back and said that her family only owed money to Zhang Heng Jai's family. She asked him about what he thought she would look at him again if she had money. Zhang Lung suddenly came up and asked Yang Cheng what he had offended Zhang Heng Jai with. The guy said it was a long story and then asked what brought Zhang Lung here. Is the meeting over? Zhang Lung rubbed his reddened cheek and said that his dad told the guy to apologize to Yang Chen. Otherwise the guy would not have approved of the infusion of his family's capital. Yang Cheng laughed and put his hand on Zhang Long's shoulder. Then he whispered to the guy if his family was very rich. He smiled and said that his family has a total asset of a billion dollars. Then Yang Cheng pointed his finger at Zhang Hengjai and asked Zhang Long about what, so he knew him. Zhang Long said he knew Hengjai because his family has several real estate companies that Zhang Long's family invested in. Yang Cheng smiled and asked that Zhang Lung wanted to get the guy's forgiveness after all. He then offered him something to do for him. Zhang Lung asked what Mr. Yang wanted. The young man offered to make a deal where Zhang Long would lend Wang Kai any money to pay off her debts. And in return Yang Cheng would allow Zhang Long's family to invest in the All Island Hotel Group. 
He frowned and asked why Young Ching did not lend her money. Because the guy has 28% of the shares of the All Island Hotel worth more than 3 billion. He was asking about the fact that Yang Chen felt sorry for these 50 million. Yang Cheng smiled and pointed his finger at the car, saying that he was still working in a taxi. Didn't Zhang Lung understand what that meant? Zhang Lung asked Yang Cheng about the fact that he was from some secret family that does not allow them to go out, and then told him to just use this money. Yang Cheng touched his lips with his finger and told Zhang Lung to be quiet. Zhang Lung closed his eyes and said that Yang Cheng could just ask the girl's father to bring someone to his family's office by 9 tomorrow morning to discuss the details. Yang Cheng approached the girl and turned to Miss Wang with a smile, telling her to bring someone to Sky Curtain Investment tomorrow at 9 in the morning to discuss the details of the debt with them and Mr. Zhang, the president of Sky Curtain, has already agreed to this. He also said that if Wang Kiani went there, it would help the girl in the current situation. Suddenly, Wang Kiani jumped on Yang Cheng and wrapped her legs tightly around him. She happily announced that she would do so, and Yang Cheng finally realized it. She thought she wouldn't be able to attract Yang Cheng with her long legs. Zhang Hengzhai, with an iron bat in his hands, pointed his finger at Zhang Long and asked why his family was lending money to Wang Kiani's family and whether they were playing Zhang Hengzhai. He closed his eyes and spread his hands to the sides, saying that he has nothing against the Zhang Hengzhai family. It's just that Yang Cheng is the second largest shareholder of the All Island Hotel, and the Zhang Long family has been working on investing in the All Island Group for more than a year and they can't afford to lose him. Zhang Hengzhai broke out in a cold sweat and asked in shock that this taxi driver was actually the second shareholder of All Island Hotel Group. Zhang Lung asked in a whisper that didn't he see what was going on. Zhang Hengzhai dropped the bat from his hands, cursing. He began to assume that Yang Cheng must have been the son of some rich family who wanted to experience life. Zhang Hengzhai held his head in horror. The companions began to panic and ask what to do. Since Hengzhai contacted the young gentleman of a large family, he also asked him to break his car. Zhang Hengzhai took out a cigarette from the pack and politely addressed Yang Chen, asking him why he had not told them earlier that he was the second shareholder of All Island Hotel. He smiled nervously and said that if Yang Cheng had told Zhang Hengzhai about this earlier, would he have allowed such a big misunderstanding? Yang Cheng smiled and asked about what Zhang Hengzhai thought it would be so simple. Suddenly the police came running and asked what was going on and which of them reported the crime. Wang Kaini waved her hand and said that she was the one who reported that her friend's car was smashed. Zhang Hengzhai's agitated companions pointed at him and told the police that they had crashed the car, but it was Zhang Hengzhai who forced them to do it. They also said that if they have any questions, then let them ask Zhang Hengzhai. One of the policemen approached the man and told him to tell him what was going on and why they were crashing other people's cars. He said that his name was Zhang Hengzhai. And his father's name was Zhang Yewu and he was the chairman of the Yewu group. He then said that Yang Cheng had stolen his girlfriend and asked if he should have taught the guy a lesson. The policeman concluded that Zhang Hengzhai was right, and then asked if he was ready to offer compensation. Zhang Hengzhai folded his hands in front of him and said in a smug tone that compensation was possible, but only after the court's decision. The policeman asked the man if he was stupid. Then he said that if, after applying to the court, the court decides that this is not something that can be fixed with money, what will he do? Intentional damage to someone else's property in the amount of more than 5,000 meets the criteria of a criminal offense. He started shouting that his father's name was Zhang Yewu. The policeman pointed his finger at the man and said that he didn't care who his father was. Zhang Hengzhai had committed a crime by intentionally damaging someone else's property. He told the man to think about how he was going to fix it. Zhang Hengzhai spread his hands to the sides and said that he would offer to pay him for the car and that he was not so bad. Then he asked how much he owed and if a hundred thousand yuan would be enough. Yang Cheng grinned and asked about that. Did he say that he agreed to a private settlement and said that let the court decide? Hang Jai said that since a hundred thousand is not enough, will two hundred thousand yuan be enough? He pointed his finger at Yang Chen and said that he had an old and broken car, so this is more than enough. Yang Cheng said it wasn't about money. He wanted justice. Zhang Hengjai sighed and asked about the fact that he wanted to scare him and bring a case. So what if Hengjai has a criminal record? He said he didn't need a job, because he would just get an inheritance. The police grabbed his hands and offered to go with them. After a while, Yang Cheng was sitting in the meeting room. Zhang Hengjai's father came to him to negotiate a car with him. Zhang Yewu said that the guy wanted a lot. Yang Cheng smiled and said that those two are really the same. Then he said that he was not going to settle this case with him, but was going to go to court. Zhang Yewu offered 500,000 yuan and asked if it was enough. Yang Cheng recalled that he had already said that it was not about money. Zhang Yewu slapped the table with his hand and left the check on it. He said he was offering 1 million yuan, there couldn't be more. Then he said that if it wasn't for the critical time for the company, did Yang Cheng think that he would have communicated with him so well? Yang Cheng turned to the officer and asked if he could leave. 
He responded positively, saying that then the guy does not agree to mediation and they will follow the legal process. Zhang Yewu suddenly stopped the guy and told him to be a man, offering to meet at another time, referring to the fact that the guy is still young and should not spoil his future path. Yang Cheng snatched out the paper, asking if he was done talking nonsense. Signing the paper, the guy said that since he turned 15, the guy was threatened by a large number of creditors. He then asked Ye Wu about what he thought his threat would do to Yang Cheng. The guy waved his hand and said that they would see each other in court. Zhang Ye Wu cursed and told the guy to come back immediately. After a while, the guy ended up at a real estate agency. The girl gave Mr. Yang his keys and asked if he had any ideas about the price. He took the key in his hands and said that he agreed with the market value. Then the guy said that the house would be handed over to the agency and asked to call if they needed anything. After leaving the agency, the guy walked down the street and thought that he should buy a car as soon as possible, because he could not afford to postpone working as a taxi driver. The guy was thinking about which car to buy for him, and then picked up the phone. 